Welcome to the Rosicrucian Podcast, recorded at beautiful and historic Rosicrucian Park in San Jose, California. Our podcasts explore a variety of topics, including mysticism, philosophy, Egyptology, art, music, science, and history. This podcast is sponsored by the Rosicrucian Order Amwork, a philosophical and initiatic tradition. To see a playlist of all of our programs, please visit rosicrucian.org. Good day and welcome to the Rosicrucian Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Leonti, and as always, I thank you for joining us. Our program will feature a presentation of the annual Rosicrucian Autumnal Equinox Ceremony by the Rosicrucian Order's Grandmaster, Julie Scott. On the first day of fall, night and day are of equal length, and the sun crosses the celestial equator, an imaginary projection of Earth's equator into the sky, on its apparent journey into the southern hemisphere. From then on, days are shorter than nights in the northern hemisphere. When the sun enters the zodiacal sign of Libra, the balance, an appropriate symbol of balance day and night, Worldwide, the autumn equinox is associated with the harvest, remembrance of times past, and appreciation for those who have gone before us. Rosicrucians mark this time of year with a special memorial ceremony, honoring all the past initiates who have dedicated their lives to carry on the Rosicrucian teachings and traditions down through the centuries. Held outdoors in a beautiful and inspiring setting, with non-Rosicrucian friends and family invited, this memorial ceremony acknowledges the many contributions and ongoing dedication of past initiates to our Rosicrucian heritage. Hearkening back to the Order's ancient Egyptian origins, a high point of the ceremony occurs when all those taking part in the ritual construct a symbolic pyramid of stones as an expression of gratitude to those who have served the Rose Cross and its ideals through the centuries. There is a magnificent sense of connection as each participant places his or her stone to help form the pyramid, symbolizing the body of knowledge passed on to us by our predecessors. In this way, we honor past Rosicrucians, their dedication to the Rosicrucian tradition, and the work they accomplished in serving the greater light. Let's get started. We hope you'll enjoy this presentation of the Rosicrucian Autumnal Equinox Ceremony. Dear Frauders and Sorors, dear friends, We are joined together at this time to honor the memory of all those who have worked throughout the centuries to perpetuate knowledge so that it is never lost and can be transmitted to seekers on the quest for light. On the traditional level, this quest for wisdom goes back to the ancient mystery schools of Egypt. As their name indicates, these ancient schools gathered enlightened mystics who met regularly to study the mysteries of existence. Eager for understanding, they aspired to a better comprehension of the laws that govern the universe, nature, and humanity itself. In this way, the word mysteries in antiquity, that is, at the time of the ancient Egyptian, Greek, and Roman civilizations, did not have the meaning that it does today. Rather, it indicated a gnosis, an understanding known only to the initiated and transmitted under the seal of secrecy. In ancient Egypt, one of the first mystery schools was the Osirian school. Its lessons related to the life, death, and resurrection of the god Osiris. At that period, the teachings were presented in the form of theatrical pieces, or more exactly, in ritual dramas. Only those who had given proof of their sincere desire for knowledge were allowed to participate in these. In the course of the centuries, 
the mystery schools added an even more initiatic dimension to the knowledge that they transmitted. Their mystical works took on a more esoteric character and were held exclusively in the temples that had been built for this purpose. According to Rosicrucian tradition, the most sacred of these in the eyes of the initiates were none other than the three great pyramids of Giza. Among these three pyramids, the one that historians attribute to Cheops is a synthesis of the wisdom that the Egyptians possessed and puts into material form the knowledge that they had acquired in arithmetic, geometry, physics, geography, and astronomy. In addition, to this day it immortalizes the initiatory path that a person must follow to gradually rise towards perfection, the ultimate goal of spiritual evolution. Rosicrucian teachings report that Pharaoh Thutmose III, considered by historians to be one of the greatest of the 18th dynasty, belonged to the initiates who frequented the mystery schools of Egypt. In his time, they functioned independently and had different rules. After being designated by the lector priest to succeed his father on the throne, Thutmose III decided to gather all these schools into a sole order governed by the same rules in order to create a single school from them all. Due to his intelligence and wisdom, he was selected to be its Grand Master and assumed this duty until his death. Nearly seventy years later, Pharaoh Amenhotep IV was born in the royal palace at Thebes. Admitted very early into the order founded by Thutmose III, he became the Grand Master and occupied himself with organizing the teachings and the rituals. Eventually, he established monotheism and changed his name so that he would be called Akhenaten, which means pious toward Aten. He also promoted a revolution in the fields of art and culture. Deeply humanistic, he devoted his whole existence to the struggle against the darkness of ignorance and to promote the highest ideals. A short time after his death, which took place around 1350 BCE, the powerful clergy of Thebes re-established the worship of Amun, but Akhenaten's work already formed part of history. During the following centuries, numerous Greek philosophers journeyed to Egypt to be admitted into the order. Such sages as Thales and Pythagoras gained access to the science of the mysteries. Upon returning to their own countries, they established schools and taught what they had learned. Their philosophy created numerous adepts and exerted a great influence on the Eleusinian mysteries. From Greece, the secret Gnosis was introduced to Rome by the Gnostics and served as the basis for Neoplatonism, whose teachings established by Plotinus around the year 250 spread to the West under the impetus of Iamblichus and Porphyry. It was in the time of Charlemagne, thanks to the theologians Alcuin and Arnaud, that the order was established in France, and then in England, Germany, and in other kingdoms of Europe during the Middle Ages. During the Crusades, many Templars participated in its work and contributed to its spread, particularly in the East. Between the 13th and 16th centuries, the traditional heritage of the order was entrusted to the alchemist, among whom were Roger Bacon, Nicholas Flamel, and Cornelius Agrippa, well known to Rosicrucians. After having preserved and enriched this heritage, they themselves transmitted it to the great thinkers of the Renaissance. <laughs> 